Welcome to our worship service for this last, for this seventh Sunday of Easter at St. Albans Church. It is our privilege today to commission Carol Ashenbrenner and Claire Parker as pastoral care leaders in our Stephen ministry program. We are grateful for their leadership and grateful that you've chosen to worship with us this morning. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord, the Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before and who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. 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 the book of Acts. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed to Joseph, called Boshabaz, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. The word of the Lord.
reading from the Gospel according to John. Jesus prayed for his disciples. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. When I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they may also be sanctified in truth. The word of the Lord. These are strange days for our city and, and the country, but also strange days for our worship life. We are in between the feast of the Ascension, which we observed last Thursday, and soon to be observing the feast of Pentecost next Sunday. We're in a kind of in-between time where Jesus has ascended, but the power of Pentecost has not yet arrived. In a sense, that's a bit like, I think for, for many of us, that's a bit like where we are in life. We Many of us have received our vaccines against the coronavirus, others still yet to receive them, but the sense that things might be moving, things might be opening up, uh, is in the air. And yet we are not free of uh, our coronavirus restrictions yet. As an aside, I'm hoping that maybe, just maybe, we'll be able to give up social distancing and be fully open by, by mid-June if we're, if we're fortunate. But for now, we're in this, this in-between uh, time. And we observe this in the church by reading from what is known as Jesus' high priestly prayer. It's a prayer for his disciples uh, in the part of John's gospel, which is called his farewell discourse. And it, it's a prayer for his disciples that they live in the world, but not of it. That's the core uh, for, for what he wants for his followers. The world is a dangerous place for them, we learn. The world has hated them because they do not belong to the world just as I, Jesus, do not belong to the world. Jesus is not going to be the kind of Messiah who will raise an army and evict the Romans and his disciples are not going to be the kind of people who are going to run out, and, well, at least I hope they're not going to be the kind of people who will run out and buy guns and lobby for permitless carry laws. So the questions for today are what does it mean to be in the world and not of it? And based on that, how might our answer help us navigate our own in-between times? Now, some Christian commentators see the business of being in the world and not of it as a matter of simply understanding God's truth and getting out there and living God's truth, even though you'll get criticized for it, even though you'll be put down for it. And there's a sort of sense in which uh, Christians are being persecuted for being, for being right and, and faithful to the, to the scriptures. The problem, as I see it, with that kind of point of view is that those who hold it tend to be really clear about what the scriptures mean and say, and, and it seems to me to be pretty bound up with a kind of cultural Christianity, a sort of assumption uh, that, that Christians all think alike and all see the same world the same way. And that's not terribly helpful. More helpful, uh, for me at any rate, 
is a book that came out in 1951 by H. H. Richard Niebuhr called Christ and Culture. And in it, he looks at the relationship between the faith and culture as a way perhaps of, of, a way perhaps of living in the world, but not of it. We might see, uh, he, he offers various options. He might see Christ as over against culture, um, might see it as judging, uh, judging the, the ways of the world. Um, and I could, I could give examples. I mean, maybe, maybe, the, um, maybe the way in which, what would Christ think of the way in which the National Rifle Association um, interprets the Second Amendment of our Constitution? Uh, as an aside here, you might enjoy um, a short documentary that's available on Netflix called Armour of Light. It came out a few years ago. And it's uh, really a story of a, of a man who I've come to know called Rob Schenk, who was a, he was essentially the lobbyist for the anti-abortion movement of evangelical Christianity. And he started asking, and in this film, he, he's filmed asking his fellow evangelicals, uh, how can we be pro-life and also pro-gun. And uh, in the course of, of this, we, what we discover is that he loses many friends, and in fact, he loses his, his whole ministry, his whole livelihood, as a result of asking that important question. So Christ over against culture is a possibility. Another is that Christ is in agreement with culture. We might see times when clearly God blesses things like um, uh, they're not particularly American, but, but, but often uh, we see it more clearly in America of a culture such as the norms of generosity and volunteerism and, um, uh, and, and community activism. A third option is something more like Christ's intention with culture. Uh, within this view, there are those who would synthesize the relationship between reason and revelation, creation and redemption, nature and grace. Uh, Niebuhr sees Thomas Aquinas and his theological work as exemplifying this kind of uh, this kind of way in which Christ is in tension with culture. Another uh, version of this would be a sort of dualism or paradox, offering a uh, way of seeing God's grace in God's grace, grace in God, and sin in humanity, and those two in a sort of creative tension. This is very much something we hear in. In, when we listen to the preaching of Martin Luther King Jr., a uh, sense of paradox. Um, or another example, the, the Christian socialists of the uh, 19th century, uh, F.D. Morris, Charles Kingsley and others, they, they would have seen Christ as transforming culture or converting culture um, to, to be ever more reflective of the yet-to-be-fully-realized uh, reality of, of the kingdom of God coming into being. In any event, Niebuhr wants us to hold all of these. He doesn't want us to pick one and be righteous about it, essentially self-righteous. He wants us to hold all of these intention as we navigate what it means to be in the world, but not of it. We might remember St. Paul here in his letter to the Christians in Philippi, when he said to them, therefore, my beloved, just you have always obeyed me, Paul, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. This, of course, is what we do, strive to do all of the time when we uh, steep ourselves in the story, our story, the human story of Scripture, revealed in Scripture. When we turn over and over again toward what really matters, which we do in worship, when we change the prism by which we see the world uh, through engaging the practices of generosity or of serving others. All of these things are ways of grounding ourselves, remembering what matters, and navigating life even in the in-between times as followers of Jesus enjoined to be in the world but not of it. I don't know about you, but I sense a sort of free-floating anxiety in the world at the moment. Uh, our bishop asked, are we going to experience an outpouring of a reservoir of grief that has been building up, or are we about to experience something like the Roaring Twenties with everybody just letting loose 
once once the other, or maybe both, maybe both at the same time. But in any event, in any event, there's this sort of anxiety around us, which is part of this in-betweenness that we must navigate. Um, as a short version of what I'm talking about, I find the confession we've been using these last months uh, particularly useful. This is a confession that we've adapted from Common Worship, a prayer book of the Church of England. And this is what we pray each week. We'll pray in a few minutes. In your mercy, O Lord, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justice and love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Is this not a good way to live fully in the world, but not of it, wherever we find ourselves in the life over the journey of faith. I pray it may be so for you, I pray it may be so for me, and I offer this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the joy and hope of Jesus' resurrection, let us pray saying, God of grace, God of glory, hear our prayer. That isolated and persecuted churches and communities of faith everywhere may find fresh strength in the good news of Easter. God of grace, God of glory. Hear our prayer. That God may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love, to seek peace and pursue it. God of grace, God of glory. Hear our prayer, that we might serve as the body of Christ to those in need of food, work, or shelter in our communities, at our borders, and around the world. God of grace, God of glory. Hear our prayer, that all swords may one day be beaten into plowshares. In the midst of a surge of gun violence across our land and in our communities, grant courage and will for our legislators to enact sensible and popular reforms, to limit access to deadly weapons, and help us, your church, to enact that reform, however we are able. God of grace, God of glory. Hear our prayer, that Christ may reveal the light of God presence to the sick, the weak, and the dying, to comfort and strengthen them, and guide and uphold all those who minister to them. We pray especially for Madison Kearns, Jay Mallon, Douglas McKenzie, Priscilla Mayer, Haley Morris, Michael Reed, Marielle Van Toon, Ellie Potter, and Ann Kowalczyk that today the Lord God will wipe away all tears, for Christ is risen. God of grace, God of glory. Hear our prayer. We pray for all who have died in the hope of resurrection, especially Joan McCrary, Greg Cummings, Jr., Robert Dilwig, Sean Cowdery, and Lenore Morocco. Give them rest and everlasting peace. God of grace, God of glory. Hear our prayer. We pray for all who have died in conflict, especially the innocent, and we pray for peace in the Holy Land. God of grace, God of peace, and God of glory. Hear our prayer. O oh, Almighty God, whose blessed Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, ascended far above all heavens that he might fill all things, mercifully give us faith to perceive that according to your promise, Jesus abides with his church on earth, enlightening our, enlightening our minds, filling our imaginations, and empowering us to be workers for God's will even to the end of the ages, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. 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 
praying in the words our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have, have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Uh, Carol and Claire, you have been equipped to serve as the leaders of Stephen Ministry at St. Albans Church. Each of you has been comforted by God with the good news of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection for us all. We ask that you now join in serving our Lord and those in our congregation and community who need themselves to be comforted. As the Spirit of Christ has given you gifts for service, we ask you to use your skills and talents and prayers to help those you serve and shepherd the Stephen ministers you will oversee. As God in Christ has shown his care to you, we ask you to help all of us in this parish grow as a caring community through your own ministry of care. Are you prepared to meet those requests that we ask of you? May you share Christ's ever abundant love with others. May our Lord Jesus, who has graciously called you as disciples, now strengthen you by his spirit for your ministry in and to this world. Look with favor upon those whom you have called, O God, and grant that they may be so filled with your Holy Spirit that they may minister in their chosen task with joy and steadfast devotion through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. 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 May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with you. Please be seated. Well, welcome to all of you who are sharing in our worship through this video today. We are so glad you are worshiping with us. If you are new or joining us for the first time or would like to know more about our life and ministry in this community, please do, at the end of the video, click down and fill out a, a form and it'll automatically come to us so that we can share with you and walk with you in your journey in faith. A warm welcome to each and every one of you. Also at the end of this video, there's an opportunity to make a financial contribution it's, it's, it's easy and it's really important and we are so grateful for your sustaining generosity for the ministries uh, in our parish, in our community and indeed throughout the world. Coming up next week is the Feast of Pentecost and our worship service will be a little different because our nine o'clock service will once again be in the amphitheater, the cathedral amphitheater where we can welcome up to a hundred uh, worshipers. We'll have music, we'll be allowed to sing, we'll have baptism, and I hope that many of you will choose to join on that occasion. There will be also uh, a, an in-person service at 10.30 and, of course, our regular online offerings. I hope you'll be able to join us there as well. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts with joy.
May the risen Christ who has passed into the heavens clothe you with power from on high. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us now and remain with us forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.